Hello and welcome back to the Luckbox podcast. Today's a little different because in the studio I have Alexi from Cybersport.com. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much for having me, man. And uh, look at the technology we have. We have Tim, uh, the uh, lead writer. I, I don't even know your job title. At Luckbox. Uh, yeah, I just do words. Okay, the words, words man at Luckbox. Words Luck for Box. money, yeah, words for money. Yeah, good to have you on, Tim. And um, wow, are you impressed with the setup? Absolutely, man. Look, it, at, look at that gorgeous beard. <laughs> is, is Tim very imposing in the back? This might be the biggest my face has ever been. <laughs> Although, I don't know. I, mean, I, I, I think to be in the studio is a really silly in scale, but yeah, it makes me feel very powerful. Okay, perfect. Um, and with these two in the studio, it means we're talking Counter-Strike. Um, Counter-Strike all the way, yeah. It's, it's a subject, I'll be honest, I, I'm not as much an expert in as either of you two. So this is going to be, uh, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you lead a lot of the discussion, but um, the obvious things we want to talk about are the recent events. So we've had a major, mm -hmm. which is a big deal, uh, and then after that we had ESL1, which, was that a big deal? No, we'll come to that, and then we've just had Blast Pro in Istanbul. Yep. So, should we start with the major? Um, what, I mean, we haven't done a retrospective yet about the major, so... I mean, I, I actually didn't understand a major was... Oh, one of our lights went out for a minute. That's awful. We're, can, we're just going to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I didn't understand was, um, for me, as a technical Dota problems person... Technical talking about the major. It's fine. <laughs> we're going to come to the technical problems, Tim. Yeah. Um, from, coming from Dota, major has kind of lost its meaning, right? Mm. It sort of feels like, well, there's, there's like nine or ten of them probably over the year. Uh, but in Counter Strike, major is a big deal. Like, what is a major in Counter Strike? Just, just can you can you fill us in? Sure. So majors are uh, they usually happen twice a year. Um, these are events with a one million dollar prize pool. The circuit consists of uh, regional qualifiers that lead up to um, what's now called the new challenger stage, uh, which is essentially the main qualifier for the event. Then you have the new legend stage, which is the equivalent of the group stage of the major, and then you have the new champions, which is the playoffs. I've got to say, it was a little confusing, all mm. of this terminology, right? Because uh, coming from another game, I mean, I, I watch Counter-Strike, but I don't intensely follow it. All of this stuff is it's new terminology to me. Why don't I just call it group stages and final? It was uh, a rebranding thing from Valve. I mean, a lot of people question it, but it's, it is what it is, and um, we're kind of getting into it. A lot of people have expressed, you know, uh, that, that, that it can be confusing, and even for the people who are in the scene, it can be confusing. Yeah. But you know, once but, once you explain it, it's. But the point is, it's the biggest event in Counter Strike, yeah. right? It's huge, and I, I look at the viewing figures as part of my job, and it's just, wow. <laughs> yeah, the E League Major was was the first one when I first joined Luckbox. I'm looking at that, like almost 1.4 million concurrence, like crazy off the charts viewership compared to anything else in esports, practically. Pra well, practically. I mean, there, there are exceptions. Um, but yeah, this was a big deal, right? Um, and how did it go? Who, who wants to start? Tim, do you want to tell us? How did it go? Well, the, the only other thing I was going to add to the major is obviously because yeah. Sujo is a big Dota fan. And you do hear a lot of Dota fans saying, you know, why don't we have a TI in Counter-Strike? But that's essentially kind of, it's our TI, and we get two a year rather than Dota's one, which is quite a nice benefit. Yeah, um, I realize but that. But this, this major... This major maybe wasn't as praised as other majors in the past, and there have been a number of uh, commenters in the scene who have suggested it might not maybe, maybe the worst major we've had so far on I, some levels. I've uh, in my research, I've seen a few people say, well, just just say awful things about it. Hmm. I mean, should we go through some of the issues? Then I mean, we'll come to. Well, our, our, I want to talk about it from this point of view because obviously face it, company have had a bit of a kicking, but I want to talk about it from this point of view as to why the Major was not face its fault. Astralis ruined the Major by being too bloody good at Counter-Strike. <laughs> and that's how simple it gets. They beat the world's number four three team, they beat the world's number three team, and they beat the world's number two team, and they didn't drop a single map. I don't think they lost more than ten rounds in any of those games. And that's against FaZe, against Na'Vi with Simple Electronic. So for everything that Faceit could have done, chickens or no chickens, Parler having a haircut, 
Like you can't force a great game of Counter Strike, and if one team is just so much further ahead than the field, it's going to be that's that's kind of what people remember in the day. You know? They're probably not going to remember the tech issues in six months. They probably won't remember where the Bardolf's commentary was good or bad, but they will remember that the final was just Australia stomping everyone <laughs> without really breaking a sweat. You know, was, was you it compare not that fun, to the TI final, you know. <laughs> Epic 3-2 in TI. I mean, in terms of good Counter-Strike, that's, I think that's exactly what we saw from Astralis, though. They, they were so dominant in their performance that um, I think it's just a good gauge to, to see in, in this you know, competitive environment that we speak of. There, there is this ongoing narrative of this being the most competitive era CSGO has seen in a while. Um, and, you know, the Astralis era, all of this conversation surrounding it. And I think... Um, I think this is just a shout to, to, to all of the teams that are you know under Astralis in the rankings to, to really step up and, and, and try and uh, compete with them because I mean they've, they've just come out of a major victory. They went to Blast Pro Series, they had a flawless run throughout the event and then they you know bested MIBR which you know they're, they're a very strong roster and they still, they still took, took the event back to back so I from one perspective I can see why you would say that the major wasn't from a viewership standpoint, particularly uh, amazing, especially the playoffs. But from the other, it's a showcase of absolutely amazing Counter Strike. And when you look at the the, the matches uh, from an individual perspective, you you look at them and you you see immaculate Counter Strike, which is, I guess, what we want to see at the end of the day from all participants, not just one. And I think that when, when you have that one that is immaculate, mm -hmm. and everyone else is not, it does yeah. create a. It reminded me of the, the, the Germany versus Brazil, very famous 7-1 football result, <laughs> where you have all this hype around what could be an epic game. And it is still epic in its own way, but only for one set of fans. And I also think people, myself, I was just really sad that Simple was not able to be simple in the final, you know, because that's what I really wanted to see, was the, the god of the game versus this team that kind of defines, like you say, what good Counter-Strike is meant to be. Yeah, but did, you're a, you're an esports fan. You're a Counter Strike fan at heart, right? Did you yeah. enjoy watching it? Was it fun? I found it fun. Yeah, okay. uh, despite them being quite lopsided, uh, particularly the playoffs. I mean, Australia didn't drop a single map over the course of it. Uh, mo like a lot of the maps were, you know, lopsided in their favor. Obviously, um, I did enjoy it because you just see uh, something as close as perfection, as, as as close as you can get to perfection in Counter Strike, and it's. It's fascinating to see because if we look at teams like Na'Vi, you know, Simple has been for a while, he's been called the best player in the world. And he has shown a consistency that's, um, you know, unparalleled or perhaps not unparalleled, but very few players show this degree of consistency in matches. And to see him falter in such a moment in, in, in light of their performance, it's, it, it's incredible. It really is incredible. And I think... Um, it's, it's a good lesson for all of the teams involved because they, they need to step up if they want to, to dethrone Astralis, which, you know, in a competitive environment, that's what you want to strive for as, as, a, as a team in, in CSGO. All right, so... so with it, that in mind, Alexi, just to, sorry, to bounce off that, would you put Simple's underperformance down to Astralis at all? Would you say that Astralis found a way to cut, put him and Electronic in a box and stop them from taking over the final? You know, I actually, um, we have an interview with uh, Dupree on, on our website. Um, and I asked Dupree that very question. I, I asked him literally, did you guys specifically target Simple during the grand final? Did you want to shut him down because he's such a, a force to be reckoned with? And he, his, his answer was, we didn't target anybody. We were playing our Counter-Strike. We were, we were making sure we were making the right decisions. We were playing the numbers game, which they love to do. And that's how they won the major. It's as simple as that. And I was surprised that's myself so because, impressive. yeah, I, I would have expected the same, to be quite honest. You know, we know the, the presence on Na'Vi, who can do what. You know, Zeus and Edward, we widely consider them support players. And you have Flamey, Electronic and Simple that are the, the firepower. Shut down those three, you have a very decent chance against the team. But no, they, they didn't. They didn't focus anybody in particular. They were just playing their game. Confidence and on Australia. They came out on top. Now, how much better are they then than the rest of the field? Are we going to see them dominating the next few events? 
Well, I, I, I heard this put a really good way. Just the worst player in theory on Australia is, is Magis. And right now, Magis number, you know, Thorin said if you look at simple and electronic in a one in a two v four, you believe in it. But if you look at let's say Edward and Zeus in a two v four, the round's already over. There's no two man combination on Astralis that you don't believe in, and that includes right now Glaive, who is off the charts for an in game leader in terms of his fragging. It's so that, I think the strength in depth of Astralis, their best player is Device or Debris, and there's no bad player on the team. I agree. I completely agree. They're, across the board, that's that's. I think that's the. Those are the characteristics of of a, a well rounded uh, top contender. You don't really have uh, a weak link, and even if you had to point one out, it would be a player who, in comparison to, I, you know, the average of even professional players, is outstanding. That's that's the simple reality. I feel. Okay. I, I guess we'll we'll see how it goes. I mean. Like you say, the other teams are going to need to step up and and face the challenge. Yeah, I mean, are, are we looking to or see Gabby. this? Are we looking to see uh, an incredible run uh, such as like Nip had back in the early days? I mean, if you look at Astralis's record on Nuke, for example, we're we're looking at nineteen zero, which is very promising. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they're they're phenomenal on the map. Navi tried to stop them in the grand final uh, of of the face of Asia, and they simply couldn't. They they're just on another level, really, and. I don't know uh, regarding the longevity of, of this run that they're going to have. Um, I, I can see them going very far with the current roster um, because really if you, if you compare them to any other team, as we saw, they're on another level. Okay. <laughs> and that's it. When I look, I say who can stop them? Who is the fanatic to their ninjas in pyjamas? Mm. If you look phase right now, we'll probably get on to, but they're not looking exactly amazing. MIBR, tons of talent, but from one week to the next, you don't know what you're going to get. Na'Vi clearly have the potential to be anyone, but like you say, Astralis in the major final made it look like it was sort of arm's distance, you know, it wasn't even difficult. So I think as much as Astralis are good, my question for the Astralis era is who's going to stop it from happening? Mm -hmm. There is no, at least when MIBR or SK Gaming last year were really dominant, FaZe were there and FaZe were saying, no, we want to do this too. But right now, there's like a team that actually, you'd say liquid, but Liquid are the, the perfect opponents for Astralis to have because they have mm. almost everything Astralis have but they tend to lose it in finals which is a problem Astralis already solved a year ago yep in terms of storylines though you, I mean I guess the idea is that we didn't have that dramatic epic storyline TI did for Dota with OG just uh, just having this incredible miracle miraculous run you did, we didn't get that, but oh, maybe we're setting up for it. Um, maybe it's it's time for someone to bring down the champions. You, you make a legend, then you bring them down, right? Mm. Maybe it's coming. Yeah. It also, we shouldn't forget the fact that there were miracles at the, at the Major, they just maybe weren't in the final. Complexity deserve massive amounts of respect for what they achieved, making it into the final stage. Whatever you want to say about the format, for an organization that hasn't been a, a major for years and years and that has struggled and has picked up players that have largely been considered not good enough for that level. They've done an amazing job to even get that far. I think there are other cool things coming out of it. The, the impression that Yanko has made on MIBR is definitely a good sign for the future. But yeah, I, I think maybe, yeah. It's also like you say, the problem is we are comparing it to OG at TI, which is a little bit unfair. It's, 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 about, unfair. As, it's about as special as it gets, <laughs> isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, well, speaking of some of the issues, here's the thing. Face it, haven't run a major before. No, they've run lots of great events, ECS and so on. Uh, but of this scale, I, I don't think they've run anything this big in Counter-Strike before. And, you know, some of the issues, forgivable, you know, uh, power blows up and so on. Sometimes unavoidable. Internet issues a bit more questionable but I live in the UK I know we, we have trouble with that yeah. um, but some of them like the technical issues and uh, people not their, their PC's not working well enough that mm. that feels a bit harder to justify I, I mean I mean how did you think about all the technical issues what, what did you think Alexi 
Well, listen, I, so I was I was there throughout all of the stages. I was there um, during the minors that took place in Twickenham, mm -hmm. uh, which is where both the new challenges, new legend stage took place. So, um, a lot of the issues that face it experienced were were out of their hands, and this is you know from 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 a source that was there. I, mm -hmm. I, I spoke to them. Um, the, the the internet issues. So essentially. Um, what the situation was i'm not very tech savvy with these sorts of things but the, the gist of it was that they had two internet connections one was a fail safe one was the main one the the main one went down the fail safe didn't go off um you know and this is this is you can say that to a degree face it should have kind of made this work but at the same time it's also uh partly you know on, on twickenham stadium and, and and providing this this service for them um so, I think for the majority of the issues that took place at the earlier stages of the major, anyway, um, they they were out of face at hands. Right. They also face it were keen to point out that they ran the minor at the exact same venue and had no internet problems whatsoever. So exactly, there was that element whereby it was. But the flip side of that is, other events in the UK have hired trucks to make sure that if your internet does go down, you have that backup service and there's an argument for saying if you're running the biggest event in Counter Strike, maybe esports, or one of the biggest in esports, it's worth splashing a little bit on that extra. Hmm. But I think I think this major really pointed out that certainly a lot of I mean Richard Lewis said it about E League, you don't make a lot of profit off a major, you know, that for the company running it, there's a lot of pressure coming from Valve to produce an event to a Valve standard, but Valve are only giving you the prize money. They're not giving you the money to put your production together as well. So no, I guess you, you have to make the books balance it. yourself, right? You have to yeah, find exactly. the sponsors. You have to find and ways to not generate in the revenue. Of running other massive events, because face it, aren't ESL? They're probably not going to see that same knock on that ESL would on the next, you know, the next few events. Or the major doesn't get you any more docs or rops, does it? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, mean, sorry, Sujo, if I, if I can just interject quickly. Um, I, for example, the, 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 so the new champion stage was taking place at the SSC Arena and previously the SSC Arena was host to uh, ECS finals. That's where all of the um, no, ECS I've events... I've been there before. They've, they've run it, what, for years actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, um, so they're going on to the sixth season now um, and I believe they, they uh, alternated between North America, um, they had one in Mexico and then every, I think every... Uh, so the first and third seasons were taking place in the SSC arena and you know for there weren't I mean there were some technical issues uh, that took place but for, for all intents and purposes it wasn't it wasn't bad it wasn't a bad experience for, for viewers or you know remote viewers okay I, I mean I'm gonna defend face it mm -hmm. here because I love those guys I've known them for years uh, it's a UK organization Tim's not gonna enjoy my defending them so so vehemently I'm all in yes. favour of UK esports. That's the one thing I do want to say is, as a, as a country, as a UK esports scene, we should be so happy to have anything happening here at all, shouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Just like, this is the first major we've ever had a British player make. And the coverage was great that. as well, uh, across, so across the news here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but go uh, ahead, Sujoy. Well, I, like, I, I think... I mean, people, what I've seen on the internet, people have been very critical of Face It. I don't feel that way so much. I wouldn't, uh, I've seen people say, I hope they don't get another major, but um, I, I hope they do because I think they've learned a lot and next time they won't have the same problems, but um, we'll have to wait and see what Valve say. I mean, uh, what do you guys think about the next major? Where should it be? Well, we we know that the next major is the So the next major is going to be in Katowice in, oh, in Poland yeah. in, in in February. Yeah. Uh, so we know where that one's going to be. But the the second one for 2019 is is currently undisclosed, and we really don't know. Like the the selection process, I guess, for the major isn't as uh, as transparent as perhaps you'd hope um, in terms of uh, Valve's communication regarding the criteria that need to be met in order for uh, an organizer to get a major. We, we don't know what the criteria are and I don't think that the, the community kind of um, community sentiment is something that they really uh, take as a large uh, kind of factor when deciding this. Right. Um, and you know... Do you think they take into account player 
sentiment. Because players all love ESL at the moment, don't they? And they do they? They do. They, really? yes, ESL they, they definitely do. The best TOs in CSGO are they? Listen. And they have great studios. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, we, we have ESL <laughs> everywhere here. We're in the ESL studio in London, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and no, I yeah, believe, players love ESL right now. So. I think if we say anything bad about ESL, the, the power cuts out. So, yeah, we love Sweet. ESL. Yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, but but in, in, <laughs> like, with, with, in all honesty, yeah. the, the Facebook deal that they did has, has caused so many issues, has caused a lot of um, hate, actual hate amongst esports fans. Um, and their viewership has been pretty awful let's be honest well of course the ESL major won't be a Facebook major because it's going to be an IEM event which uh, in any case I'm, I, I think I think the Facebook deal is ending at Twitch. the end of this year so so it will be on Twitch the major will be on Twitch um, and we'll see the viewership figures by the way viewership um, the E-League major has been the biggest Counter-Strike event I believe ever held yep so and, and face it was slightly lower in terms of their I believe so. I have, um, I have some uh, stats that I got from ESC.watch. So um, the total time uh, watched for the E-League Boston Major was 107,700,000 uh, uh, hours. Um, and that's with Chinese views. Yeah, you're adding Chinese numbers yeah. in there. I, I've looked at these numbers. <laughs> I never add Chinese numbers to it, just in case. So, well, without China, it's uh, 49,524,000. Yeah. So for me... Th- what that says is that we're really seeing a lot of interest from China, which I, I feel is massively important, particularly in the context of the uh, expansion of CSGO to China with Perfect World. Yeah. They, they have released a, a free-to-play client. Yep, it's China. launched now. It, had, it, it wasn't officially out in China for a long time. I think we talked about this in one of our previous podcasts. Mm. But Will it grow? I think it's still questionable. Hopeful. I'm very hopeful because um, some of the Oceanic representatives, some of the some of the players have, have are really really hoping for this to take off because it would have massive implications not only on the Asian region, the Oceanic region, but the global CSGO just playership and, and viewership as as we can see. It's just I I genuinely wonder if. It's too late for China. Mm. It's kind of in. It, I'm kind of feeling like, look, they they've got MOBA, they do MOBA really well, and and they now like Overwatch, though. They, I, I guess I, I, how much? I don't know what the figures I mean, are they for have Overwatch. The, the, the Shanghai Dragons in team in Overwatch. Yeah, but I, I think if we're talking about huge numbers. We, we're talking the the MOBA yeah. games, and now we're talking mobile games. They they're already making that switch, so they may have completely missed Counter Strike. I'd love to be proved wrong though. We'll I would love to. I would okay. also love to see well, Korea pick up Counter Strike. Uh, uh, I think More. maybe too late for that. Maybe too late. Yeah, for that. I think but so, let, here's a question then: How about a major in China? Since uh, TI is going to be in Shanghai, Shanghai, I believe, next year. How about the second major in China? Do you think that's possible? Is that ridiculous? That would be an exciting prospect. That would yeah. be. It would be at the very least interesting to see what. It comes out with what what the turn up's going to be. I'm I'm sure, you know, the stadium's going to be packed. I mean, just look at the viewership, right? We we're, we're seeing you know, literally multiples of of the of the European viewership, I guess, in Chinese equipment. There's more there's more Chinese viewers than there are European. I, I always question the numbers from China. Mm. Okay, that's <laughs> that's a fair point. But I, for me, it would just be interesting to see how it yeah. works out at the very least. Tim, Chinese major? Yeah, I mean, the problem is we always have this, you question the numbers from the Chinese viewership yeah. conversation. But if we're, you know, the first day of, I think it was uh, League of Legends Worlds yesterday, there were 30 million viewers. Uh, there were no Chinese teams playing. And 29 million of those viewers came from China. Now, even if they're not all real people, there's no way in the world that Valve can look at that and not think to themselves, there's a lot of people who could be spending a little bit of money on the Steam marketplace. There's a lot of people who could be coming to watch the events. Mm-hmm. My question, I guess, would be is with China, we've had WSG now for what, two, three, a, lo- a long time now, we've had WSG. Biggest prize pool in Counter Strike, $850,000. Wasn't enough to save Golden from getting sacked by Fnatic. <laughs> uh, it's basically almost like a joke people make about Happy now that he was, you know, he won this major prize and. 
was moaning about it afterwards. But so yeah, that's the question. I think there is still a real conversation, a real question in a lot of people's minds as to how seriously Western teams are able to take Chinese events when you factor in travel, some of the accommodation issues we've seen at previous events, and then also who would run it. I, I don't know yeah. which whether ESL have the ability to work out there in the same way they do in Europe. Or whether you'd need to ask Alibaba or one of those companies, the you know, WC people, to get involved. Mm. I think, logically speaking, there has to be. TI going over to that part of the world is a very logical and obvious step. And if Counter Strike ever wants to be in that part of the world, it can't really afford to ignore it much longer. And, you know, Tai Lu just made their first ever major mm. and excited a lot of people. I think okay. that you, know, you have to say they have some of the most exciting young players coming through right now in the Asian region. Okay. Okay. Well, Alexi. How about instead of China, we do it in Russia? Would you like that? Absolutely. Um, this, this is assuming we've got the power to choose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Should we make it Russia? What do you think? Russia, yeah. Star, so I mean, Starladder. Starladder, yeah. You have a tournament organizer in Starladder that have uh, run a lot of successful events. They have the Star Series um, uh, series. Mm -hmm. Um, and they they run events successfully, and then the players have expressed. You know, they previously had a format where they had, um, I believe, it was a best of three Swiss, right? I think it's another yeah. Yeah, best of three Swiss, and a lot of players expressed that this was a format that they really enjoyed because it was it's essentially the most competitive you can get. Um, you know, traditionally, you know what you see at ESL events, some, some the, the DreamHack events is um, best of one uh, winners matches and I believe uh, all of the initial matches uh, and then the elimination and deciders the best of three it's a double elimination bracket and then you have best of three playoffs um, for star series it, it was best of uh, three throughout and that's that's a wonderful format and if we would be able to get this for a major I think that would be revolutionary and if they could pull it off I don't see why we can't have a major in uh, in NCIS territory. Not not necessarily even Russia. Perhaps you know Ukraine. That's also a destination where we can have it. Of course, they've, they've organised events there already. And they've I don't see, supported Counter Strike for so long as well. The yeah. CIS region has arguably been supporting Counter Strike for longer than any other, with more commitment. Like the money that's gone into multiple teams over there, mm. and you know if there are sadly issues with a few. I mean, we've seen people express concerns over the possibility of a major in Brazil, despite Brazilian team being very strong. I think the possible left field one is Denmark, because although Denmark only runs small events right now, they do have a big audience to Counter Strike Blast. Oh, we're losing you, Tim. We've lost audio. What's going on? Try talking. Uh, Blast have managed to show ah, that they've got... You're uh, back. Sorry issues. about that. We had some technical issues. That's all right. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming yeah. it's your fault. Face it. Haunting <laughs> it. Yeah, everything is. Um, yeah, but like I say, Blast managed to put on a couple of excellent events. Blast have clearly also managed to pull a little bit of influence within the Counter-Strike scene one way or another. So if we're not going to consider the possibility of my dream, which is another MLG major, then I think Blast and Star Series are probably the ones, Star are probably the ones that are going to be in that list here. Maybe two, AS, two ESL events in a year is a little bit unlikely. Yeah, we, we saw um, d a Danish politician, I can't remember which one. Uh, David Prime Minister. Oh, the Prime Minister. He was, was the Prime uh, Minister tweeting about Australia. Australia. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that, if you see the Danish football team, it's quite easy to understand why he's going so hard on esports, right? Okay. But I want to come back to Swiss format because you seem to be all in favour of it. Tim, what do you think, Swiss format? Don't like it. Don't yeah. like it in the least bit. Also would way prefer best of five finals, maybe even best of five semi-finals. I'm a bit of a sadist. I think a best of seven final would give you the truest result. Because let's be honest, I want to know who's the best on every single map. I don't want to know who's the best at picking maps. I don't want to know who's the best. I just want to see who is the best at every part of Counter-Strike. And sure, it's difficult, but in return, that's... you're going to get half a million quid when you win. So, <laughs> that's seven you know, maps. you know. Uh, Seven it would be a long watch. It would be a weekend. I've seen Dupree on Twitter saying five is too many and it has to be best of three. But <laughs> there's just part that. of me that feels like, how are you going to have the biggest event of the year with any game that's best of one, given all the variants that can happen, all the different things in a game that can just, you know, one round, one fluky moment can change the result. 
and that's your world championship of Counter Strike. Uh, listen, there's, there's a fundamental issue with having something like a best of five or even best of seven series in that with the team schedules, right? When when they have back to back events, listen, Astralis, uh, Made in Brazil, all of these teams that were part of the major two day break, they're off to Istanbul. How can they prepare seven maps, man? It's it, it's. It's inconceivable. I've, I've got really. a revolutionary idea for this, for how we could do this, okay? Just, this might blow your mind, but just bear me out. So imagine, I know this is crazy, it goes against <laughs> all logic. And stuff. All is. Just imagine we didn't have a month-long player break just before the biggest event of the year. Just imagine that instead we had the month-long player break after the major. Mm. So you come into the major on the back of five or six months of solid action. You can choose what events you go to, obviously. You haven't got to go to all of them, if you know. Last say you have to be in Istanbul where well, you can't be in New York, that sort of thing. But imagine that. Then you have your best chance of being prepared across as many maps as is possible. And then after that, you've got your month and you can do all your roster moves and you can fix everything and you know all the tweaks can come out and stuff. But I just kind of think, if we, sure, there would be a lot of teams that can't prepare on seven maps. But again, that not that a test of how good you are at Counter-Strike? Yeah, but I mean, if you can't bother put the time in, you can play on more maps than three. Let's assuming let's assume the scheduling of the major, which not ideal, but was out was out of. Let's assume we live in the the real world for a second. Well, uh, yeah, it's 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 hard to to make things line up like this. Mm -hmm. I've run events before; I know how hard it is. Um, But coming back to Swiss, like I was a player, and as a player, I I like Swiss. I like double elimination. But I haven't played professionally for a hell of a long time now. And what do you like about it? I, I like the fact that if you slip up, you've got another chance. Because there is, in in professional gaming, as professional sports, it's nice to have that cushion. Because if you feel like you're the best player, you want to be able to get to the final, right? That's the main thing. What if you're not the best player, though? Do you like it as much then? Well, here's the thing. If you're the second best player, you still want to get to the final. And, and the no, problem like the 12th is, best player, if you're well, OG. But, but the, <laughs> well, no, they, they were the best, just under yeah. That's the thing, is the seeding is never quite right. So what it means is you get knocked out too early. And it's, look, I should have been third, but I got knocked out in the first round because I faced this team. Um, so, yeah, as a player, I, I, I wanted those extra chances. But as a spectator, as a fan of esports... I sort of come to appreciate the very simple formats mm. groups of four single elimination and what I like is the drama but also the fact that it's very easy to follow and it's a case of win this group then go here and then you play this team and then you're going to have this tough match and then you're in the final and it's just it's just great spectator experience as as someone for, for me so I'm not a fan of Swiss, I've got to say. I mm. didn't like it. But I don't know if that's unpopular. Well, what do you think? Well, what's your priority? Are you trying to find the best team in the world? Or are you trying to produce the best no. show? My are we, priority. Are we UFC? Are we WWE? Are we the World Cup? Are we the Olympics? No, my priority I, is very I, simple here. I, I, I think we create the best show for viewers, right? Ah. No, I, I, I actually. No, I, I, I think we are a spectacle now. We are okay. a show. We are a show because that's what esports is. It's entertainment. Um, it's entertainment because we've got the finest players in the world. We've got people who devoted their life to this, who have spent countless hours and are so incredibly skillful. These are the best in the world. That's what's entertaining, but it is entertainment. I, I simply think it's a balancing act, right? Because from from one perspective, yes, of course, this this is entertainment. I, I agree with you completely in terms of uh, this this no longer being you know people in a garage sitting there setting up a LAN and, and that being a, a tournament. No, it's 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 a show. That's why you have live audiences. That's why you have all the pyrotechnics. That's why you have the entertainment of it. But at the same time. Uh, I suppose it is important to, to, to have a conversation with the players and see what, what an optimal format would be and kind of balance it out with, with, with the viewers' needs and the players' needs as well. I, I, I strongly feel we're, we're not quite at a traditional entertainment level just yet in terms of us prioritizing over everything else, the, 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 the stream, you know, the live viewer experience, 
Um, and I, I think at this moment in time, we're still kind of at a place where that, you know, players' requests are taken into consideration. And, you know, I guess the testimony of that would be the, the Star Series again, for, for example, which had uh, a Swiss best of three bracket because a lot of players expressed that this was something that they really enjoyed and uh, what they wanted because it was the most competitive environment they could get. Okay. I'm Do happy to think- be proved wrong. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you think Usain Bolt wants to run the heats in the Olympics? That's the question I would ask. Like, I, I fully respect that Dupree is one of the best counter-strike players of his generation. I think one of the most underrated counter-strike players of all time. Um, but when he tweets that he doesn't like best of five, I'm not entirely sure that I, A, believe he's being entirely motivated by his desire to see the most pure competitive result, versus his desire to not spend six and a half hours playing Counter-Strike, or whatever it might turn out to be, you know? Mm. Um, and secondly, I've also seen, not, I'm not, and I'm not aiming this at any group, this isn't eSports, this isn't sport, competitors across multiple disciplines, that maybe they can play the game at a level that you can't concede, but their understanding of the organization of the game and how the, you know, ask the average footballer what they think should happen with the World Cup. Are they gonna give you an intelligent answer? Or, so I'm not saying the players' answers shouldn't be, but I think you have to take into account that sure, they would prefer to have it a certain way, but equally, Sujoy's point about entertainment is valid, but I, I guess I come more from the school where I want that balance against, I wanna know that at the end of my two and a half weeks in London, the best Counter-Strike team in the world beat all the Counter-Strike teams in the world, and we know that's who won the major. Because as much as Gambit winning in 2017 in Krakow was beautiful, I, I don't know, it seems like that team is, didn't really get any credit for it. And it's the same with Cloud9. What does that do in the long term for the credibility of your major if the team that wins it falls apart within six months? Astralis' well, legacy actually is one of the things that could save the Face It Major, ironically. You know? If the Face It Major is the beginning of the Astralis God dominance period, that makes it more significant than it otherwise seems to be. Well, on that subject then, should we move on to ESL1 New York? Because yes. that's, um, that's the contrast, right, in terms of format. Hmm. They had the simplest format. Uh, I assume every match on stage. Um, single elimination, uh, was it? No, they had a studio stage before this. They had three okay. days on stage. And All right, but they, they, they weren't a lot of matches. That was the point. It was hmm. a simple hmm. format. Um, and the result the best was... The win. <laughs> was a... I suppose this was more of a, a storyline, right? Mouse Sports yeah. digging deep and managing to win where they probably shouldn't. Alexi, I mean, it, 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 Mouse Sports is, uh, you know, in, in the context of recent uh, rumors where we we heard that Snacks might be leaving, where we heard that Oscar might be leaving, um, it was it was kind of shaky. And seeing them come out on top of of all teams, Team Liquid, was. Um, was very interesting, um, particularly in light of these rumors, like what happens with them now? If the roster has proven that they can function, and as a matter of fact, in a best of five series, mm. what are the implications for, for Mouse Sports now? I don't know, are they going did to stay together? Did Mouse beat Team Liquid? Hmm. Or did Team Liquid beat Team Liquid? <sighs> that's, that's an interesting Top question, man, because Team Liquid, I... I can see where you're coming from because Team Liquid, I feel, have some uh, issues closing out, and we've we've seen this, you know, during the major they they had difficulties um, here in, in in the grand final of New York. There was also they they can't lose to Mouse Sports if they're going to be you know contenders. You know, they were the favourites for the major. They were one of the favourites for the major, and they faltered. They they I don't you know, feel they should have lost to the major. Sorry? Were the only team to beat Astralis at the Major? Best of one overtime on Inferno? Was that the yep. only game Astralis lost? Yeah, that was 1917. Well? I, yeah. I can't recall if anybody else beat them, but... I think that, Astralis might have lost in week one, but randomly mm. to... Yeah. But yeah, one of the only teams to actually take a map off Astralis. Yeah. At yep. the Major, yeah. Albeit, you know, in... in, in, in somewhat peculiar fashion, let's put it that way. Um, it, it was... An interesting Inferno map, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it always is, isn't it? Mm. That was that map was ruined. 
No, I see. I've, we wrote about this recently, and I think one of the questions that hasn't been asked for a long time, and I really want to, I think there's a mentality problem with Team Liquid, and it's it's maybe a controversial thing to say, but there was there was a particular moment uh, on Dust Two in Map Four where Elige was, uh, I think it was a long doors, and he was doing that thing you see players do where they sort of circle their mouse over where a player is through a wall or whatever. And he did it a couple of times, and you could tell he was feeling himself, and he was, you know, showboating a little bit, and he knew how good he was. And it, it's sort of at that moment I was sort of looking for Zeus to come down from the heavens and slap him around the back of the head and say, "Look, we haven't won this game yet. You know, stop force buying, save up, get your double orbs, just close it out." And I'm starting to say maybe Zeus has taken his team as far as it can go. And if we're going to accept that Nitro isn't the problem and they don't need a primary world-class orper. Because let's be honest, like every team, they look like they've fallen right now. Has where was Zeus in on map four? Where was Zeus on Dust Two? Where was Zeus to say, guys, settle down, stop force buying? You know, we need to win this game properly. With thirteen four up, we can't afford to just keep throwing UMPs at these people and hope it works. I, it hasn't come up a lot, but I I can definitely agree with you on, on in regards to mentality issues um, and. From my perspective, I, I don't feel it's even uh, implicitly in-game. I feel outside of the game, we, we saw them falter a lot just from a psychological perspective, particularly at the Major. Um, they they felt... Uh, it felt like they crumbled, uh, particularly under the pressure, I you know. know. The, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would I would almost say, say that. I mean, obviously for a world-class team, they... they in comparison to other teams, let's say, that they're not as fragile, but if they want to pursue that number one spot, if they want to dethrone Astralis, which, you know, was one of the storylines, people did genuinely believe that Liquid, Liquid were one of the favorites for it. And they really need to work on that, I feel. Um, and if they don't, I, I I really don't know what the, what the solution is to, to the team. It's... It's a difficult one, particularly with with kind of like the background issues. I'd, I'd call them, in that it's not obvious how to fix them. Uh, it's not a talent it, it, issue, though. Sorry, it's not a talent issue. That might, no. it seems to me obvious. There's, you know, Elise, Nath, Twist, Nitro is maybe the fourth best player in the team. You're doing all right there. Yeah, Paco is a wonderful support player. But that's oh. the thing. Are they better placed than Navi to be that number two team? They have more talent? Do they have the mentality? It's hard to compare the two in that um, I feel like they're, they're quite uh, different in, in their setups, right? Because with Na'Vi, you have a lot of firepower that, that can sometimes get out of hand. Um, and I think bringing in Zeus for Na'Vi was, was a massive step to kind of uh, taming it and really focusing it on something uh, productive. Because... Uh, Without Zeus, we saw you, you know we saw the state that Navi was in, right? With with Caesar as the in-game leader, they they weren't they didn't function nearly as well. The lunatics are running the asylum. You know, exactly. It it was it was it was in a state. It was in a in a really bad state. And with the addition of Zeus, you know, initially they had this period where people were skeptical. People weren't entirely sure what what would happen with the team. But then this roster went on. They believed in the system. They had Zeus who. Who had a, who, he has a very clear vision of what he wants to happen in the team. And now we see them at, at the top, man. And with Na'Vi, honestly, I don't even know what they what, what the next step is for them to kind of ascend to this, uh, uh, I guess, number one contender. It's, it's a difficult situation, much like with Liquid. I don't know if it's in-game, because on paper, listen, both of these teams... <laughs> They have everything they need. They have all the parts. They have all the parts. The question is, yep. what do they need to do to take that next step to, to ascend from their current form? And, uh, yeah. If we learn the lesson from history, what they need to do is be surprised by one of their players not signing a new contract on the last day before they're due to sign a new contract. See that player go to a team that then turns out to be utter rubbish. Pick up an optic reject who turns out to be one of the top five players in the world and win a major. That's all you've got to do. <laughs> I've actually been thinking about this. Like, Counter-Strike is the hardest game in the world right now to make a good roster move. If you look at it, like we've said about Liquid, we've just said about Na'Vi, we've just said about FaZe, they're all teams with big problems. 
but can you tell me the player that will fix it outside of just get simple to carry? There isn't that, like, I look at it and I think almost every team needs a fallen, an in-game leader who can AWP and who can, but there's only one fallen and Glaive is the solution to everyone's problems. I don't think Glaive would work at FaZe. I don't think Glaive would work at Na'Vi. Hmm. He might work at Liquid with on it, but yeah, I think right now trying to do, sign a player to fix your team is the hardest thing to do. It really is, and it's not obvious uh, what what player would fix a team, as as you said. Hmm. It's it's come to a point where these these issues they aren't obvious, and their resolution isn't obvious either. And to say that you know if you introduce player X to roster X, it will rectify all the issues. I I think that's that's just silly it's, it doesn't function that way there's there's a lot more uh, intricacy to these rosters and in order to be able to to fix them you really need to dig deep and dig into the issues uh, both individual and as a unit and it's just not obvious it really is not obvious and it's interesting to see um, how these teams resolve themselves because like as you said as an example I mean you, you jokingly said you know Magus joining Astralis it you know they're on a different level from what they were. Kirby config. Why did why did Kirby leave? Everyone because config. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, config. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. It's exciting time. Or config. Well, that's the thing Maybe. is, it's it, it. I don't think there's any playbook that's set out. Right? How do you build a good team? People have ideas. How do you build the best team? There's still a lot of unknowns out there. It, you know, we. I think what FaZe have shown is you don't just put the five best players on a team. Though that's the <laughs> that that level of Counter Strike has come and gone. When having the five best players was enough to be the best team. Because hmm. there's this conversation about device versus simple that's been raging for a while now. Everyone says the same thing to me. Simple's the best player in the world, but device is playing better. How is this possible? How can simple be the best? That's what I mean. It's not. It's like the same to go into Germany versus Brazil. Neymar might be the best player on the pitch, but his team lost 7-1. So I think that's the question right now, is team composition. And then when, when we come back to Na'Vi, with you saying Edward is so valuable, Edward is such a wonderful part of the team. And if you speak to any fan, they'll say, cut Edward, bring Hobbit, cut Edward, bring you know Adren, whoever. It's clear that within Na'Vi, there's an understanding that Edward does more than we can see on the screen. So maybe it's also our inability to understand how the game works on that level that makes it hard for us to pick out who, which player will solve a problem. Hmm. And I think it is understated, like, the, the, you know, the background effect of some of these players. For example, Zeus, we, we don't associate him with, the mass, with, with massive impact in-game, but I feel like his presence on the team really made Na'Vi a different roster. Okay. I, because obviously it's not just individual play it's, it's how the team communicates how they work together yeah. and you need the right mix and the right leader to make that happen yeah or am I talking rubbish no I completely agree I, there's an argument for saying he also needs a star player I think that's one of the things that he doesn't what, he doesn't do what Glade does like if you look at the, the Gambit team Hobbit was on fire in that tournament if you look at Zeus's time, he definitely has allowed Electronic and Simple to flourish in the system that Na'Vi have got now. I think he deserves huge praise for that. Um, I tend to be more on Alexi's side. When people are slating Zeus, I always kind of compare his record to other in-game leaders and think, what is it that you see here that's the problem? You know, he consistently produces results. He consistently produces teams that go a long way in tournaments. I think maybe his his, his out-of-game personality turns people up a little bit, you know, the showboating with the Mercedes and things like that. It's just... Maybe people would prefer him to be a little more humble. But, but as we said... As good as he is. As we said, esports is entertainment, right? And part yes, of it exactly. is being uh, an entertainer, that. celebrity, someone with personality. It's actually very important. And for a team, it's important not just to win games, but to be likeable, to be relatable, to be sponsorable. And interesting. Get social media coverage. It's, it's... Should we segue that then? Go on, Into then. the entertaining team from ESL1 New York that once again crashed out, FaZe. They have entertaining in-game leader Carrigan who plays to the crowd. They have Starman Nico with his massive watch and Guardian, the greatest author I've ever played Counter-Strike, if you believe that. And yet this project appears to have really fallen by the wayside recently. You know, to How the point they now do? where They went out in the They quarters? crashed out 0 and 2. Didn't oh yeah, yeah that's right. ESL1 New York? Uh, uh, fifth to eight. Yeah, zero two in, in group B. Yeah, zero two. 
Yep. And Carrigan was cut from the in-game leading role at the major as well. Nico took over in-game leading when they were zero and two in the major qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So Carrigan is arguably, I mean, there's no way in the world that you say Carrigan over the last 18 months is worth having on a team as a player. As a leader, yes, but as a player. So yeah, I think that's the thing. The entertainment thing is nice, but you look at Scream, you look at FaZe, maybe it's quite hard to be entertaining and win a lot at the same time. How, how would you fix those? We, we've had this conversation on so many occasions, yeah. Tim. Listen, the, the, the FaZe project, I don't feel it has failed. I really don't feel that the project has failed in any way, shape or form, especially considering their performance in comparison to other rosters that we've seen, right? Because we, we, we like to look at the top 10 and, uh, and you know, compare them. Obviously, the top tier competition should be compared to, you know, their likes. But at the end of the day, this is, you know, a roster that has left a mark in history, right? Mm. Sure. Um, at this point in time, FaZe are in, you know, in, in, in a bit of a interesting period, particularly because of, you know, what you mentioned, Nico taking over in-game leading. What are these implications for Carrigan? Because Carrigan, you know, for the longest while, the way uh, they justified his, his presence on the roster, while sometimes he didn't have the best of performances, um, his presence was the tactical component. Him and Raban worked together to produce uh, the tactical component of phase, which is important and significant, particularly because um, they have to work to very specific requirements because the team is very explosive. You have a lot of aggressive players who need... Um, you see what Nico said about Robin, just to break for us there. He said uh, Carrigan hadn't been working with Robin. Mm. In the interview, Nico said Carrigan hadn't been working with Robin, that he liked to do everything his own way, and that Nico would be doing more work with Robin than had been the case in the past. Which see, I found super that's interesting, interesting, given that Carrigan's reputation is being sort of on the fly, loose. You'd expect him, if you want the in-game leaders, who takes a lot from that, from the coach, wouldn't he? Well, see, now imagine a situation where Nico goes on to, to work with Roban to, to improve the, the, the tactical component. Like, yeah. where does that place Carrigan? That's my question. It's how's he going to feel being like replaced like this? And just how's that well, dynamic? Yeah, massive gonna, paycheck gonna from work. Optical North, so that worked out nicely for him. Perhaps. I perhaps that's the step. Yeah. But I honestly, if, if FaZe continue down this road, I. I really don't see Carrigan remaining on, on the roster for very much longer. Um, and uh, again, with the roster moves, who who goes instead of Carrigan? That's that's a significant question to to ask because I I don't see an obvious candidate at this moment in time. Rain hasn't played well recently. There's an argument, I guess, for saying if you can upgrade on Guardian, then, then maybe you upgrade on Guardian. But then who's an upgrade on Guardian? The, the, the kind of the counter question is let's say Carrigan goes are we assuming that Nico continues to in-game lead and if Nico continues to in-game lead then that opens up the options for bringing in NBK I think mm. NBK makes the team better in a few ways a player like that because it then because I, 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 I have always questioned with FaZe do they need the in-game leader if you have Olaf Meister Nico and Guardian and I'm not disrespecting Rain here but he's not quite on that level of achievement could you not run a sort of brains trust situation rather than a single in-game focused leader? And of course you add NBK into that mix as well, an incredibly experienced player who has a history of having to work with temperamental people and difficult players and stuff like that. I don't know if there's an in-game leader certainly that I would put my faith in to be able to come into phase and fix the problems that Carrigan could. That's, I guess, where I am on this right now. And I don't want to see Nico as the in-game leader on his own long term because I think that's just as bad as Cold Zero being in game leader for MLBR. You lose Nico's ability to make plays. I think. Mm. That that's actually one one of the one of the things that I was thinking about. If if you have a star player um, take on the role of an in game leader, it takes away from his focus on his individual performance, which is such a massive impact on on Faze in particular. Because Nico for for a very long while was considered uh, the best player in the world. I mean, simple kind of overtook him in, in, in some way, shape or form, or they're, they're in competition with each other, but Nico is a remarkable player in, in all respects. And if he has to take on the burden of an in-game leader- He has that, to split his focus, doesn't exactly. he? Exactly. From, from his playing to his actually leading the team at the same time. Yeah. Not an easy thing to do. Not at all. And we've seen- And Olaf's look like the best player in the team right now. Mm. Which Obviously. is interesting considering his fairly recent return, right? He's, he's really gained form quite, quite, exactly. quite fast. And when did Nico look the best recently? 
during the stand-in period when they were having to play with people like Exist and Croman, and he knew he had to step up and carry. Mm. That's actually the closest we've seen Nico to his mouth sports days in the last couple. I mean, he was in god tier form when Olaf was out of the team. And, and you know, the the I, it's no coincidence that him moving to phase and simple rising, Nico, maybe the best player in the world. We need to redefine it as the hardest carry in the world. We talk about simple and Nico, rather than the flat out best player. You know, mm. that's what it feels like with Nico. He's gone into the system more, and maybe negated that craziness that he had before. Hmm. Uh, in which case, who do you think is the pl- best player in, in the world at the moment? <laughs> I mean, on technical ability, there's, I don't think you can argue against Simple being the best player in the world. But the problem is, I think if I was going to pick one player to play for my life right now, it would be anyone in a red and black shirt from Denmark. Mm. Because they just don't seem to understand how much is on the line most of the time. If you watch Sipix play, it's like he may as well be me on the sofa playing Mario Kart when I was 12, he cares that much, but yet somehow he manages to produce results that half a million pounds a month, whatever, you know, it's like, Astralis have just fixed something in their heads which allows them to play Counter-Strike at a level above even someone like Simple right now. Yeah, but the question is, is if you split them apart and they weren't in that team, in that dynamic, would they be as good? Giabi says no. I mean, this is the thing, it's this, this current lineup, isn't it? But it does feel like with Astralis there is a system rather than a collection of players which is what makes them so good whereas it feels like if you remove Simple or Electronic from Na'Vi you're talking about the 10th best team in the world yeah. you're not Alexi, talking about who, the best team in the world anymore. who would you pick then best player uh, individual uh, talent my guy from Ukraine Simple uh, listen I, I think he's just such an outstanding player individually um, I don't think anyone comes close to his consistency in, in, in performing. And actually, um, in, in an interview we did at the Major, uh, I asked Guardian, listen, um, Navi, talk to me about Navi. He has insight because he used to be on the roster. What do you think um, Navi really needs to work on? And I was like, do, do you feel like Simple's too much of a component on the team? And his answer, to, to my surprise, was, you know what, no. S- simple, simple... You, Simples are constant. They need Electronic and Flamey to step up to the mark right. and really show shine through. And I sort of sat down and was like, you know what, yeah. His, I mean, his, his, his stats over the past God knows how many events have been... Why would you not been, want it? Yeah. Yeah. No team in the world would say no Simple right now. Mm. And even man. if it Simple goes to phase. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. If, you, if Simple goes to phase and I'm the phase clan owner, I'm saying to Nico... Uh, I have to. I'm kind of paraphrasing Thorin from a few months ago. If that happens, I'm saying to Nico, right, mate, you go and work out where you're playing because this is Simple, the best player in the world. There isn't really a. That's the, the problem Simple creates, I guess. And I think that's maybe why I'm so glad the MIBR thing didn't work out because Simple, Cole Zero in the same room, you know. And you do wonder with Simple and Nico as well whether the egos there would be a little bit. But then, having said that, Simple appears to have turned into some kind of esports Mother Teresa in the last 12 months. He says the right thing on every occasion. He's endless sportsmanship. Saw a clip of him on stream recently telling Jason R he should go pro again because Jason R is really talented. And <laughs> it's just kind of mad to think this is the guy who was, you know, the most toxic player in the world two years ago. Could have been a bit of media coaching. Who knows? Maybe. I think he also learned his lesson from his time with Team Liquid. I yeah. just think. But everyone he grows up, if don't they? Yeah. And if you can rep people in the game to the point where they look like amateurs, it's probably quite easy to be humble out of the game. You know? <laughs> That's why Usain Bolt's such a likeable guy, because he doesn't need to prove anything anymore. Okay, so the, yeah. the, the loudest, saltiest ones are, are the ones who are slightly lacking in skills, maybe. I didn't think we were talking about Big Clan today. <laughs> oh, oh, are, you, are you talking Good. about our, our British player? Well, how let's have a little bit. Let's have a little bit of patriotic pride. It's been a very difficult week to be uh, British, hasn't it? What with all the dancing queens and stuff. But do you, Lexi? To you, is is this the beginning of British Counter Strike being a tiny bit respectable? Now we've had two players make it to the major, or were Smuya and Death simply part of a system that could have been replaced by a different player? Uh, I like is there how, a change how you're in the asking. Cases? Asking the the Russian, <laughs> yeah, because I, I was born in this country. We, we've been very biased. Okay, come, give us an unbiased you to that on this. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Listen, I think that both Death 
and Smuya were were significant components in both of the rosters, and they were very important in the run. I mean, look at Smuya; he's he's been showing um, great growth. And uh, in terms of you know j- just stepping up from the UK for for the longest time, if we take Def for example, right? He's been on Complexity for a, a while now. I think I believe it was two thousand sixteen. Yeah. I think in 2016 he joined and he's been grinding away you know he's he's been a person who's just worked 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 and uh, and now he sees the fruits uh with smoothie he he kind of exploded onto the scene right um he had the whole situation in epsilon where there where there, where there was um there was some issues i i believe with the, with the contract uh, and that kind of got him some some That's spotlights yeah and 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 he got yeah. him out there, and and people looked at his talent. Big said, "Okay, let's let's get him on as as our guy," and it produced something. As for UK UK CSGO, listen, man, until until we see a full fledged UK roster, I, I I I don't see this as we have representatives, but to say the UK scene is you know on the map, I won't feel confident making that statement until we have a full but is that likely roster. to happen because i can't see it somehow in 2019 well, it starts with it starts with inspiration doesn't it mm. like if you look it's the same journey you need that and i i hope we'll see the same thing with rops and with nico and with every player that comes from a region that isn't super counter-strike strong though. for every new brazilian superstar i'm hoping that you know an estonian superstar means we get more Estonian kids coming up. We've seen, I think, there's a Lithuanian player now on Imperial. And, I mean, Issa from... Jordan. Hellraisers. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. When he came in, you know, big names in the scene who have now admitted they were completely wrong to say so. We're like, oh, what's he going to do? He's from Jordan. Like, you know, Hellraisers is a perfect example that talent doesn't care where it comes from. Talent just exists, you know. And with any luck, I, I, I'm really hopeful that someone like Samuya can be the reason that maybe a few hundred kids turn off Fortnite and turn on Counter-Strike, pick up an AWP, you know, in 10 years' time, maybe the Imperial are at a major with a team that has three, four UK players, five UK players, you know, because that would be ultimately, I think, fantastic, not just for the game, but fantastic for UK esports, because right now we are like 90% just on-camera talent. You know? Yeah. That's our role in esports. Well, where are your loyalties, by the way? I, I'm calling you Russian because you have a Russian name, but... What are you? I'm going to admit I'm a diehard Navi fan. Listen, during the during the grand final at the Face It Major, I a, a tear rolled down my cheek. Guys, I, I have to confess. Uh, but with, with UK talent, I mean, I, I spoke to Def, and, and he was just so happy to to, to be there, and it, it was amazing to see kind of his. He was just so happy that after all these years of work, after all this perseverance, he saw something for it, and you know, playing in a stadium. With it was massive, man. It was it was grandiose. This 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 massive arena, and this this is what he was looking forward to. And they were chanting his name, yeah. <laughs> smooth, yeah, death. Even, Even when he wasn't there. playing. So you, can, you can see what Wembley means to the UK guys as well. That's the other yeah. difference, yeah. of course. The UK guys to play at Wembley. Sure, you're not. That means something to every single kid that's ever grown up in this country. You know, it's so yeah. I think I think it's going to. You know, I jokes aside about smooth, yeah. He legitimately outplayed some of the world's best orpers at that tournament. He yep. owned Guardian, I think, on a couple of maps. Just like, and you have sure he he got wrecked by some other players. He got wrecked by simple. Who doesn't? But you have to say that he he backed up his tour. He went out there and he produced and complexity even more. Like Death made it to you know third week of the major in his home country, allegedly after turning down Cloud Nine. So it's fantastic to see that kind of gratitude for you know making it this far yeah bit of a cheesy shows you what esports can do thing you know <laughs> yeah well hopefully there's a new generation of Counter-Strike uh, deaf and um, uh, smoother fans who are just going to be appearing all over the place now just uh, all of a sudden we'll see UK players infiltrate the scene well, they find it easy to get visas right now as well so that's <laughs> Unlike the Turkish players. Yeah. Although, again, that was one of the, you know, yeah, to go back to it, Wopsy, great to see him. Um, we haven't talked well, about in Istanbul? Last Pro. Um, well, no, sorry, well, you're I'm talking about the Turkish well, team, Raiders, aren't you? Well, I was going to say, going into that, were Hell Raiders in Istanbul? Because uh, um, I had to choose between ASL no, and Blast no, Pro. No, they, they, they were not in uh, Istanbul, no. 
space soldiers were, weren't they? That was right. Yes, space, space soldiers, soldiers were the full lineup this time. Mm -hmm. With uh, with with no hard style, poor poor hard style. But um, that was it was heartbreaking, man, uh, to to see that yeah. happen to space soldiers at the major. So it, it, essentially, what the situation was? One of the players, um, I can't, was it engine? Uh, I'll find out. You do that. Okay, so one of the players. Um, that might be Alex. Like, not entirely. I... Yeah. Sorry, you keep me in suspense here. I don't yeah. know this story. So one of the players was not able to get a visa in time for oh, for the major, okay. and the coach had to stand in. Um, right. I did and know this story. I take it back. They, you know, they played their hearts out. Yeah, and it was you could engine. See engine, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was heartbreaking to see because they they had worked for this so so hard. Like this Turkish team has, has it, it's been around for a while. They've stuck together. Through through rough times, and to see this happen to them was 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 heartbreaking. It was such a it was such a storyline. I think it could have been one of one of the main storylines if had had they you know had a full roster and really went into. Was the there much support for them in London? Was there a lot of Turkish you know? In Istanbul, the support for space soldiers was insane. But they, see, they were playing in the studios. They were playing in Twickenham, so they they, they never yeah. got that. I mean, the only never the only support, to. yeah. We saw Twitter support, massive Twitter support. Mm -hmm. Everybody was on their yeah. side. Everybody was cheering them on, despite you know being a player short, essentially. But yeah, it, that that was that wasn't that, yeah. that it's, was upsetting. It's it's upsetting doubly. It's so because esports is not that immature, and we shouldn't have these problems. We mm -hmm. should be able to deal with these. It's it's not a new problem. It's not unexpected. If you have and a twenty-five million dollar tournament, you can't have people not getting there because of these yeah. problems. Yeah, I mean, we've we've had making. these discussions for so many years now. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's infuriating for it to keep happening because we know we we know what might happen, well, so we should be dealing with it. Last can run an amazing event in Istanbul, as we're going to talk about now. Hmm. But you try and get one of those amazing players like a Boxic or a Zantares to America from Istanbul, it's impossible. You know. Hmm. And, Valve surely must understand that there's a value on their major being damaged here, you know? That Space Soldiers team would have added significant value to the major if they'd made it into the second week. Zantares is one of the most exciting players in Europe. And he's finally starting to prove that he's not an onliner, you know, that he can do it on land situations. Boxic, I still think, might be the best dust two offer in the world. Hmm. But these guys are sitting at home, and we saw with Hellraisers, when they get the chance to come out and play, they can produce incredible results and it's just like tournament organizers i think need to be the ones to work on this because they're costing themselves genuine value by not having these players at their tournaments whereas so, last play like i say managed to get to the best teams in the world and lots of other sides well i mean so let, tell me about blast pro i mean was was it fun to watch or was it just astralis dominating steamrolling the competition it's essentially what happened barring the uh, grand final where they they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with um mibr but with, with Blast Pro Series, they have a very interesting um, format. So the event um, has six participants. Um, they play through a best of one round robin group stage. Um, top two teams get into the grand final, uh, mm -hmm. whereas the, the, the remaining four, uh, four teams, uh, they play in 1v1 show matches. And depending on the outcome, you know, they, they, they cop some more uh, prize money. Okay, so it's more of a show. Exactly. I see. It is more of a show. And there's three matches running simultaneously. So from, a, from you know, if you're watching remote, I, you know, it, it, it's frustrating. Personally, I didn't, I didn't really even watch the matches. I was, you know, on, on a post-major <laughs> relaxation period, right. luckily. Um, but yeah, it, a lot of people have expressed that the format, uh, they really struggle with it because there's three matches. You want to watch all of them, but, you know, keeping an eye on multi-twitch or whatever is, is, is difficult. Mm. That's mm. multi twitch is, uh, but on the flip side, I guess because we did, we did um, make a few comments this week about having Astralis owned by Refresh, winning the Blast Pro series owned by Refresh, mm. uh, commentated by Anders Bloom owned by Refresh, but uh, it is one of those situations where if you're going to run a tournament like this, two days, you're going up against the SL1 New York, which is a legitimate event. I can see an argument for making a little bit more casual, you know. Because if you try and spin it as some super competitive, you know, circuit, then you are leaving yourself open to criticisms of, if not conflict of interest, then, you know, why in a super important event have I got, in the same way that we had with Parler at the Major, you know, 
there's a time and a place for the fun content, there's a time and a place for the serious competition. I guess Blast Pro have decided that for this one, and it makes a lot of sense to me. I think they just wanted to keep it light, although, having said that, Made in Brazil seem to have made a better fist in the final than Navi of the Major. You know, they took a map off them, if I'm right there. Hmm. So that that should be a significant result for. Although all of this, I have to say, is overshadowed by the fact I don't know how well Astralis played at uh, the Major versus other ones. I don't know if they had straps they just didn't use until the Major. That's something I have to. I have. I've been th- knocking it around my head for a while. Astralis at the major versus Astralis anywhere else might be a different team. Yeah? They might sit on strategy specifically for that event. I mean, they ought to. I think teams mm. just just. Well, when they lost to North, it's the it's pragmatic. I thought when, you know, it doesn't it, matter. It is mm. pragmatism Where though. Their a game. What, but but you ought to. It, it's like there's a time and place for the effort, and you've got to be efficient with it, right? It makes sense uh, in any other in any other esport where. There's a bigger event coming up. You're going to hold something back. I mean, do, do you do yeah. think yeah. there was some of that? There, there definitely was some of that. I'm not sure it was the case for Astralis because they they seem so dominant, irrespective of whether or not they used uh, new things. Like I, I don't personally, I didn't really see any any new stuff coming out. They're just a very intelligent team, you know. Overall, and I mean, they're just too good. They don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, listen, their utility usage uh, in the in the form of you know grenades, uh, smoke grenades, flashbangs, molotovs is is fantastic. It really is. And uh, they're trading as well. Yeah, exactly. Their it's, trading is. I don't even think they need to. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. I don't think they need to. Some of the teams. I know Navi did some stuff that they they they, they kept close to their heart, and then you know during the the big matches, the playoffs, they they employed. But for Astralis, I think they just steamrolled irrespective. Yeah. Okay, uh, and speaking of like the the casual entertaining event which features Counter Strike, <laughs> I mean, I, it wasn't that extreme, but I, I don't have a problem with that. Again, we're talking about entertainment here, and uh, one of our subjects we we talk about luck boxes Fortnite as well, and and what does Fortnite esports look like? I think it's gonna be more about entertainment than it will be about look these these teams are in this bracket and it's cutthroat it, it, it's about creating a show so I don't have a problem with Blast Pro creating a so show what you're saying is we need CSGO Battle Royale tournaments as soon as possible <laughs> well I, I didn't know 100 I, best players I, well, but See, thing, I said I, that but I've actually just talked myself into really wanting to watch uh, CSGO Battle Royale with the world's 100 best players now but the thing is though that, that only works because there's a very serious scene of cutthroat competition mm. now if you didn't have that it would make no sense to have a show match. You can only have a show match when there's a legend that's been created. Yeah, and and listen, uh, one of my favorite events actually in in Counter Strike is uh, CS Summit. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, originally from <laughs> Dota love, two, you're, you're, you're super familiar yeah. with them, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, the format is is just amazing, and I when when you look at it, when you watch it, the content they produce, hmm. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Like uh, all of the exactly. all of the you know laughs and, and gags that they they yeah. have have on there is is, is amazing. It, it feels like it's ours when when they create shows like that. It mm. feels like okay, they're making it for me. They're, yeah, it's authentic. Yeah. It's really it, it's all the in jokes are there. And you know what? There's people who probably won't understand most of the jokes, but but because you're a fan, you watch it and it's like yeah, this is this is brilliant. It's who it's made for for the um, fans and for the players. They yeah. have a blast there. And, but that it's couldn't just, exist without. The, the hardcore scene. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I also I, I also came in Smash from esports from Smash and Summit mm. in Smash is amazing because it's also a top tier tournament in Smash because the prize money is as good as anything else. Mm. So you not only get this wonderful atmosphere and the incredible content, but all the world's best players turn up. So it, basically, if we it, if the CS Summit ever got the budget to have every one of the world, I think you'd have an argument for one of the world's best competitions. Mm-hmm. And while the stage is wonderful, you know, stage fright is a real thing. And would we, we get to see, there's no coincidence, Liquid's best ever result as the current five man team is a CSGO Summit, where they were able to take out a better team in a relaxed environment without screaming fans and without stage lights. You know, I wonder if, to tie it all back into that, there is an argument for saying those sort of events favour the less temperamentally solid teams, if that makes sense. Mm. Which is a great thing, yeah. Uh, but but it is a skill. This this is something I know as a player to to be able to play your best on stage is half the battle sometimes. So um, 
yeah, I, I don't want to see that disappear. But at the same time, I mean, th there's things to take away from every event. I, I'm looking forward to the next year's summit, though. So much, man. I yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be good. It's 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 been rescheduled, hasn't it? I think it, it was due to happen at the end of this month, and they had to reschedule it. Due I think. To... Would it be overlap? Because well, what do we have? I think we have Epicenter at the end of the month. Um, yeah. But you, what's coming up then? Uh, we, we, we're wrapping up here. Mm. What, what's on the horizon then for, for Counter-Strike? I think the closest event is Epicenter. Yeah. Um, Which is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very solid event. I, I can't recall uh, who the participants are uh, in terms of uh, invited teams. I don't know. Maybe, Tim, do you, do you know? $64,000 question for you for Epicenter there, Alexi. <laughs> so of the top four, how many teams are going to be the same roster when they get there? We say Astralis has the same roster. Are Na'Vi, FaZe, Liquid, are, you know, are FaZe, for example, going to turn up at Epicenter with Carrigan and the team? I believe so. I don't think they're going to make so. changes in, in, in the space of time. Because what, it's what, three weeks, two and a bit. Um, so what if you sat Carrigan for this event and bring in Croman? I know it seems silly, just on the face of it, but if Nico's your in-game leader and you just want to see how it goes, you know, with that happening, isn't Chrome a better player than Carrigan just on the face of your, your numbers? Aren't you going to lose fans if you do things like this, though? I don't think Carrigan has many fans left. Really? I mean, he, he has some fans. I mean, we, we shouldn't take away from that, but I don't see no. it being more productive in that way, man. I, I, I see them showing uh, better results with what they have now, but kind of working around the, the system where they have Nico as the in-game leader. Uh, but Carrigan takes takes on a role and they kind of work out what his role is within the system over the course of the coming two weeks because I don't believe they have um, anything scheduled. Um, and if they work that out, then I think they could have a functional roster, at least for the moment, right? Because such a drastic change moving from you know Carrigan as in-game leader to, to, to Nico is is you know a colossal change and to call it this if early this is the first time it's happened as well so you don't know how to react if, to it if, if, well that's the question it, has it happened I wonder if this is the first time it's happened has there been a mutiny before in the phase team both phase or well, phase liquid and Navi are all confirmed for episodes by the way this year so yeah they'll mm -hmm. all be there again well the to answer the question about rosters, no, I don't see I don't see either of them changing. Change. No, I don't see them changing. I, I think they for now, with FaZe in particular, I think if out of the ones that you've listed, they are the most volatile and, and, and you know in question, I guess, the roster. Uh, but I don't see them changing until then. I really don't. I think they need to give um, a shot uh, to, to see what Karakan can do outside of the in game leader role if they are to adopt Nico as, as the in game leader. Um, and then if that doesn't work out, make some changes. Um, it, but you, you kind of do have a timeline because we do have the, the major coming up in February, and if you are going to that go for a change, then yeah. yeah, you have to you have to do it soon. You have to start incorporating the player, otherwise, there can be some disaster for for phase. Are you going to be there? The theme, isn't it? Though? Are you going to be in sure. Katowice? Oh, uh, not sure yet. Not sure yet. Yeah. Um, well, well, we'll have to see. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be there, Tim. Hopefully, you're going to be there as well. Oh yes, hopefully. Yes, no. My first trip to Poland, actually. Okay. Well, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a good one. Mm. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. Alexi, good to have you in the studio. And thanks for Tim. having us. Beautiful Tim in the background, scaring children. Thank you. Uh, and taking names in Counter-Strike. That's what I have planned after. <laughs> <laughs> well, the technology <laughs> held out on us. Uh, so, except for one light. Yeah, apart from the light. Well, thanks for joining us. This was the Luckbox Podcast. And coming up next, we've, we're going to have uh, Roman from VP, the GM, who's going to come on and talk to uh, myself and, and Red Eye. Red Eye, who couldn't host, be desk host at Blast Pro because uh, he was sick. But um, hopefully, speedy recovery. He's on with us next week. So uh, see you then. And uh, keep playing. Thanks for having me, guys. guys.